back to Fox News Prime Time. I love when Tim Pool talks about he can't believe people are falling for these narratives when Tim Pool himself literally fell for the narrative that Donald Trump was going to win every single state. A few months earlier. I wouldn't be surprised at all if Trump had a 49 state landslide. I think we could see a 49 state landslide. We the 49 state landslide is so insane. Like, like there's no, it, it's so crazy and so delusional that I don't think Tim Pool could have like, actually like it's so far beyond a reasonable take that i literally think that like he was joking or something i refuse to believe that like someone could be this delusional he may be looking at a mondale reagan type scenario where trump landslides 49 states and we may see a a 49 state landslide maybe a 50 state landslide. that'd be amazing there's no way he believes this, right? I mean, look, I don't really watch a lot of Tim Pool, except for like the really funny, except for like the really funny takes about how like, you know, feminism is the reason why I, I, I can't find good dates and shit like that. Like, so let's hear what uh, everyone's favorite uh, Beanie Boy has to say. We've obtained new images out of Chicago from over the weekend. Please be advised, some may find what we're about to show you graphic. Thousands of young people gathered for a three-day music festival. Graphic? What? It's just a music festival. What the f do you mean? What's graphic about that? Didn't they hear Joe Biden's dire warning about a second dark winter? Many of those who claim to follow the science became very upset at this site. They don't like to see people outside having fun. They want you to believe these concert goers are in grave danger. And that might be true. They are in Chicago, after all. Last month, the city saw 105 murders, three times the amount of COVID deaths. In Washington, D.C., murders also surpassed COVID deaths by a near three to one ratio in July. Despite these numbers, the media and elected officials are seemingly still trying to figure out how to flatten the curve instead of addressing the violent crime pandemic plaguing inner cities. Tim Poole hosts the TimCast IRL podcast, and he joins me now. Tim, it's good to see you. Thanks for having me, Ben. You know, this level of hypocrisy that we see from uh, the leaders of America's inner cities, it, it, it's audacious in a way that I really have, I mean, it's, it's like nothing I've seen before. It's as if they uh, imagine that the American people are just too stupid to pay any attention to the level of hypocrisy and the level of government's failure to address the problems that are clearly impacting our communities. What do you think is going on here? I. I, I, I honestly have no idea. You know, having grown up in Chicago, see, I, I have personally witnessed the gun violence. I'm wondering why after my entire life. I love Tim Pool, dude. He's like, he's witnessed everything. He went to France to witness, or he went to Sweden to witness uh, the, the Muslim invasion. What hasn't Tim Pool witnessed, dude? I love that. The man has personal firsthand accounts of everything that's ever happened, dude. They've not been able to solve it. They seem to just keep doubling down. The fact that he's never witnessed a girlfriend is literally because of feminism. You guys are being anti-incel right now. Oh, no. So here's why Tim Spool's single, and it has nothing to do with uh, anything we just talked about. I can't possibly have babies this is because it? of climate change. Oh. You this, know. Right, which is nonsense. No, of course. But I do think it's crazy that I'm about to be 34 and I have no family. Because my, my dad had two kids by the time he was 27. Yeah. And I'm like, man... You know what? You know what the problem is, though. It's definitely not me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think it's everybody else. Yeah. I can't imagine possibly. actually saying that. Oh my god! Imagine actually saying that. Just kidding. I think didn't he have a girlfriend, and then his like incel audience got mad at him? When it comes to the COVID restrictions. Our leaders, the mayors, the, the governors, we see them flaunting the rules. They don't wear masks. They tell everyone else to. The funniest thing about Chicago is they're warning us that the Delta variant is on the rise. We got to we gotta bunker down and make sure we slow the spread. But only after we can make tens of millions from our big rock concerts. At the same time, they come out and, and tell us that all of the Black Lives Matter protests weren't spreading COVID and all the right-wing lockdown protests were. I, I can't believe people fall for these narratives, and it, it kind of breaks my heart to see.
Well, it, it really is frustrating on a number of different levels, but for me in particular, I mean, I know people who have experienced all manner of different uh, uh, criminal situations in Washington, D.C., that took hours to get responses. I'm sure that you saw that footage. And in fact, I know you talked about it on your podcast recently uh, from the D.C. police chief talking about how far behind he is when it comes to the level of manpower that he needs in order to maintain a safe city. That to me seems to be an, a scandal that everyone should be talking about. And instead, we're just debating about whether you need to wear a mask and what the penalties should be if you don't. It's a perfect uh, scapegoat. It's a perfect excuse, a perfect distraction. There's, there's so many places in, this, in our country that have had escalating crime and violence, especially over the past year. We've had untold riots and violence and, and political terror on small businesses. And then as soon as the bad news comes that could negatively impact their, their political world, their, their de the, uh, the Democratic Party, all of a sudden they got to shift everything back to the argument about the pandemic. And they've got allies in media who allow them to do it. They don't, they don't challenge them on these things very often, if at all. And often they translate on their behalf and explain what they're really doing and why. My favorite is this study that came out of uh, Colorado, I believe, uh, one of the universities, showing that actually the Black Lives Matter protests reduced, may have reduced the spread of COVID, <laughs> as if we're supposed to believe. Wait, the reason why the BLM protests, not reduced, but the reason why the BLM protests didn't actually correspond to a spike in in uh, uh covid was because when there were protests happening outdoors by largely mask wearing uh people there wasn't as much fucking foot traffic inside of stores because covid spreads inside of stores you have on any given day 500,000 people walking into fucking stores and shit that's going to be significantly uh that's going to lead to a significantly higher likelihood of people spreading covid than 2,000 people that are walking down the fucking street. It's literally basic math. Like, walking indoor... I've talked about this a million times over, dude. I, th my favorite fucking thing... My favorite thing... about how uh, conservatives operate is that... all they need... for them to stick a narrative is... for your idiocy. Okay? All they need... All conservatives need to, like you know, hammer on a narrative is the assumption that you're stupid enough to believe it. Like, it just doesn't make sense. It just doesn't make sense. It's like, well, what the fuck? Like, these are guys who are literally, they're looking into it and they're finding, well, here's the reason why and explaining why. Yes, uh, during the duration of the BLM protest in the aftermath of the BLM protest, you didn't see fucking massive spikes in COVID. And the reason for that was, sounds surprising because even I thought that they would lead to a spike in fucking COVID. But the reason why I recognized that I was wrong in my original assumption that they would lead to fucking spikes in, in COVID was because protests with like 2,000 people it, it walking down the fucking street seem like there's a lot of people, but foot traffic that may not look the same exact way as like 2,000 people walking down the street, most of them wearing masks, is because the 500,000 people that are walking indoors inside of stores and whatnot and communicating with one another is significantly worse for COVID spread. That's it. Studies found that the number, uh, the amount of extra people staying at home was far greater than the number of people who came out to protest. Yes. That while our cities are being attacked and some small business, businesses are being destroyed, now we're seeing escalating crime and we're not getting a conversation about it. I think people on the right, conservatives, People, disaffected liberals need to take control of the narrative and start asking these questions and not let them pull the conversation back. We've got a vaccine. They've, they, they've, they've gone and talked about how effective it is and how it's working. It's fantastic. And we're going to get those vaccination numbers up. Okay, then why are you coming out with more restrictions? More. And the people who are saying like, this may be a dumb question, but how did it not spread that the BLM protests were rolling loud was a super spreader? Was it because they weren't wearing masks in Delta? My educated guess on this is because and educated in the sense that like i have anecdotes one is an event where you're fucking sucking face okay with a bunch of other people the other is like you're walking down the street for an hour to two max and then you're going home that's the big difference there's like closed off areas too whereas like during the blm protest like you're literally just walking down fucking streets and that's it you're not going inside 
the lockdowns? Why are you trying to act like... And also, yeah, during the Black Lives Matter protests, they did not have a Delta variant too. But there was also more people that are vaccinated now during like Rolling Loud, of significantly more. Because there was no one uh, during the Black Lives Matter protest that was vaccinated. The vaccines weren't out yet. Everyone's got to stay home. Meanwhile, you get to do whatever you want. Tim, you are someone who has been at the front end of media innovation over the past several years. You've created really a, a, an alternate way for people to get some of this information that is never really talked about within the dominant forces of corporate media. It seems to me that you and people like you have a critical role in shifting this conversation to what really matters. What are some of the ways that people... Bro, okay, okay, dude, hold on. I just want to pull up something really important because he talked about murders, right? He talked about fucking murders, right? 25,940 people in Chicago or in Illinois in general died of COVID. Okay, since the beginning of COVID. If I were to look up the death rate, like the murder rate as a consequence of gun violence, which is incredibly fucking high, it wouldn't touch that, okay? It literally would not fucking touch that number. That's insane, dude. Murder by guns, mind you. Don't even get me started on that part of the problem. Guns that you can easily acquire from, uh, you know, immediately the, the state over, one state over. So I'm sorry to Tim, but like this narrative is fucking laughable, dude. People who may not have your platform, but who want to try to shift that narrative, as you say, how can they get involved? How can they share information that cuts... Chicago has seen at least 336 homicides for the first six months of the year, just two more uh, than at this point in 2020, but 33% more than 2019's 252 homicides, according to an analysis by the Sun-Times. There you go. Fucking 20, 25,000 deaths is a consequence of COVID. So you're saying the pandemic is much more deadly than gun violence? Hmm, exactly. And don't get me wrong, the gun violence numbers are fucking insane. And Tim Pool and others like him are also doing their very best to stop uh to stop that specific epidemic as well okay if you are to look at it like it's a fucking epidemic so there is also that problem like he's like um i'm sorry but there's an issue with gun violence and murder in chicago which uh of course i will never address the root causes of and i will do everything i can to potentially uh stop any sort of like mitigating factor there and then also on top of that these liberals are constantly talking about COVID, which has killed significantly more people. And I'm doing my very best to also stop those people from, uh, you know, masking up or getting vaccines because of my nonstop coverage, where I talk about how vaccines are not good, okay? And create vaccine hesitancy. You know, I'm causing these problems in, in the best way that I can from the limited amount of uh, engagement and interaction that I have to the broader populace. And then I sit around and uh, talk about how the problems that I have played a hand in creating are uh, too hard to solve. I'm a centrist, by the way. I'm a liberal. Uh, everyone always is saying, like, uh, Tim Pool, you are such a liberal. It's great across and actually highlights the things that matter as opposed to going on with this corporate narrative. Well, it's hard because we've got the issue of big tech censorship. We see cancel culture that many on the left and yeah. The reason why we can't deal with these problems is because we got big tech censorship. And what that means, of course, is that uh, I should be, you know, a million people should be watching me, but instead only 100,000 people watch me. And uh, that's the only problem. It's cancel culture. People constantly are saying, hey, Tim, show me your bald doo-doo head. And then they don't get banned. But when I say transphobic things or when my Nazi friends say, you know, white supremacist things, uh, then they get canceled. And uh, honestly, there's no solution to this cancel culture because it's really one-sided. People are constantly saying, uh, I want to see your bald head. I want to see the light shine off your bald head. And uh, those people should be banned as well if we're going to ban the white supremacists. Deny, but there are regular people with small accounts trying to express themselves. They'll say something like learn to code and get banned on Twitter. <laughs> but I really do think you need, you, you need a critical mass of people stepping up and expressing themselves and i understand it's very difficult you know for people who have families and children they're trying to just get through this to make sure their kids will have a better future mm -hmm. will be able to have food to eat and have a job to support their families but i really do believe that if everybody who opposed you know the wokeness the hypocrisy from from you know our, our leaders if they did speak up and they were brave then i think we would see a dramatic and immediate change mm -hmm. yo i'm fucking nailing his voice and cadence by the way can we just 
Can we just take a brief moment to appreciate that I think I'm doing a pretty good job with the Tim Pool. Uh, the way that Tim Pool talks. Anyway. All these daily streams, whether big or whether small. So there he is again, the sun is streaming. The sun is streaming. You wait.